Good morning. All right, here it is, finally. Uh, I got an unboxing for the Daystate 25 Cal Tactical. I'm going to go through this. There's some details, especially if you're a Canadian. Check this out. Looks like it was a bit of a bumpy ride. Got this buckle broken off on this Plano. I ended up buying this in the United States and having it shipped up to me. Um, and I've taken off all my identifiers, like my last unboxing, just so I don't have any kind of haters and stuff. This has been flipped over. I don't want anybody knowing it. Not that my viewers are bad. It's like, you get the weirdos. So, check this out. It has been opened by the Canadian Border Services. Um, they've inspected it. And let's do this. Let's, I'm excited. So, I'm just going to open this up. Kind of weird buckles on here. So... There we go, there's buckle number one. This one is broken. We'll get this guy here. Okay, last one here. I think this one's gonna. Alright, so let's get this thing going here. Alright. This is the day state. Now, I'll show you something right now. I'm kind of touching the new toy here for the first time. Uh, this one's used that I bought. And you'll notice there's no shroud on here. Um, I don't think we're allowed to have shrouds in Canada. So the shroud's been removed. I've gotten rid of it. Now, I want to comment on the shroud. If you look at my videos, you will see that I do have something on mine. It's not a shroud. It's actually something I've been working on with a machinist. So if you look at my other, uh, my Airwolf ones, um, you'll see something butted up against here with some Allen screws. Um, I try not to show it, not because I'm being a bad guy, but because I actually have a cool idea. Um, I have something that goes along here that a machinist and I are working on, and it, it fits over top. It's, a bear, it's an air stripper, so it gives you better uh, pellet stability, and it also allows you to tune the barrel. Because you've seen um, barrel tuners where there's like a big piece of aluminum, and you, you cancel out the harmonics on this barrel. So that's what I'm up to. Um, I had a gentleman from Quebec ask me, so I told him, I was like, you know what? Good eye, it's not um, a shroud. Um, it's a it's a barrel stripper and a tuner that I have on here, but I don't show it in my videos because I don't want somebody ripping off my idea yet. Uh, I might sell them, so I'm trying not to show it. So just so all my Canadian viewers know, um, I'm not being the bad guy by having a shroud. Um, I have a barrel, uh, an air stripper, and a and an integrated. It's like a two-in-one barrel stripper, uh, not barrel stripper, <laughs> barrel tuner and air stripper. Okay, so. Let's get going with this. Let's check this thing out. Um, so I got this guy here. This is 25 cal, right? So I'll show this. We're clear here. Okay, so I'm going to just check this out with my camera operator. That's, that's quarter inch. And you know that's going to disrupt some serious amounts of tissue. Okay. Um, I'm going to just cock it. Ooh, it's a lot of force behind that. What I have had here, and I'm just gonna decock it. You can go like this, hold your hammer, touch the, the trigger, and there, let it down, okay? Safely back without discharging it. Now, I'll flip it over now. When I bought it secondhand, someone's mounted this here, on here, which will be for um, a bipod. And we'll show you, I'll show you the bipod. Same fill cap scenario here. It's obviously used, um, but it, it was a good deal. And I'll flip this over here. Here we go. So we have the fill pressure gauge. Now this is the first, you know, I own two Daystate Airwolves. This is the first Air Ranger that I've seen. And quite frankly, I think the Airwolf is better, but the Airwolf does not push um, a 25 cal um, Barracuda, you know, more than with 45 foot pounds. This guy here, um, the tactical has been tuned. I'm not going to say where I get my stuff tuned because I'm actually doing some competition stuff and I'm not giving up my advantage. Um, I'll let that out later to my guys that watch and inquire. And if we're down at the same thing, I'll tell you over a beer. How's that? Um, but not to the rest of the world. This has been tuned up to 60 foot pounds. That means it should drive an H&N Barracuda, which I have here. Show it. Our Kodiak match. One of these guys, and it should. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen one of these, but look at that. I mean, for crying out loud, 
quarter inch. That's a big pellet. So this is what I've got the rifle tuned to, is this pellet. I've purchased a lot of them, and it's going to be tuned up for that. I, according to my tuner, this rifle is firing these pellets at approximately 915 feet per second, which is just under 60 foot-pounds, in and around there. I am pumped, okay? Um, bottle cover on here, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, it might come off. I don't know if I like it or not. Um, it, uh, before they uh, shipped it up to me, um, this was leaking. So I actually had the, uh, my, my tuner um, person there, he uh, fixed the O-ring and stuff. Um, I've had the air, uh, not the air hammer, but the, the hammer pulled out of here. It's been polished. I've had it coated um, with some proprietary um, chemicals that my tuner uses. And I'm not going to tell you what they are just because he asked me not to. Just because he, he's done a great job for me. So he's tuned it, he's done the trigger. I have a new valve in it. Um, I've taken, do you see this here? Harper patent valve. The Harper patent valve is not in this anymore. I have a custom valve in this because when this thing runs out of air and you get down to, you know, into the white, the gun's dead. Actually, the, uh, the valve, um, somehow the spring releases and um, you can't, it won't seal again. So the gun's dead. So I had that gotten rid of. I'm told that I will maybe get, maybe get 15 shots out of this thing. That's how much air this big burly bugger's using. It is just an air hog. They should call it an air hog, <laughs> but I guess they're already calling tanks that. This Air Ranger is, is eating a lot of air. Um, it's, I would say it's a bit of a fire breathing dragon when it comes to 25 cals. It's pretty rank to drive a 31 grain pellet at 900 feet per second. Okay, so um, I've yapped about this enough. There's some scratches and stuff. It's a used gun, you know, but it's tuned. So that's all I care about. Crown looks great. It's already been checked. It's one holing um, at about, I think, 40 yards or something like that. So let's get into the rest because um, there's some stuff here that I did get um, with, uh, with, with the rifle. And I bought this used um, from a really nice guy who uh, he actually, um, the guy that I bought it off of, uh, he works for Homeland Security down in the U.S. Really nice guy. It's so nice to, to, uh, to buy stuff off of people that are reputable, you know? And uh, so anyways, he was just a super guy. And I'm not trying to make a political statement. I'm just saying the guy was basically, you know, law enforcement. And law enforcement officials are usually pretty decent guys to deal with. They follow the rules. So, here we go. This is a Hawk. Uh, the Hawk, I think, what is this thing? What is this thing? I've never used one. Oh, here we go. Here, check this out. Hawk side winder, eight and a half by 25 by 42, half mil dot, made in China. Um, I don't like that. I'm gonna review this, this scope. And uh, looks like we got some caps. You know, there's caps on it. I, I don't like that. I like American made. I like, um, look at this, some British sports match rings on here. Those are Brit. Um, I don't have anything against Chinese people. I have something against quality. Um, I'm a quality, not a quantity guy. And I love these rings. I can I use these exclusively on my stuff. I'm really dubious, you know, of this thing. I don't know, man. I'm a Le I like Leopold, Night Force, Schmidt and Bender, stuff like that. Okay, so... I might, you, we might burn this on video. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really dubious of it. I've heard great things, but I also like to invest some money into optics and I don't know, the, the jury's still out there. I'm not gonna, I, I, I'm not sponsored. So if this thing is a piece of junk, I'm gonna tell you what I think, okay? And I'm, not that I'm an expert or anything, but here we go. So here's some more stuff that I got from the person that I bought this rifle off of. Oh, okay, so uh, this is um, a bipod for mounting to the to a Picatinny rail, and there's there's a portion right here of Picatinny rail on here. So I don't know. Let's let's do it right now. Let's mount it. Probably not that tough. Oh yeah. Okay. So this obviously is just a stud for. Uh, <laughs> I've got it mounted backwards, guys and gals. I know I've got uh, female female um, viewers here so check it out 
check this out. All right, so it goes this way. So let's get this guy standing up. All right. Um, I've got a scope cover. So it's you can see it's a pretty nice looking rifle. Um, let's see, can it can't? No. See, I like to use a Harris Type S bipod so that if I get it, you know, if, if you're shooting off of something that's not perfectly flat, you can roll it or cant it. That's what it's called. You can't roll it. So let this down. That's how you decock it. Cock it. A lot of force here because I had it tuned up to 60 foot pounds. The springs have been played with. It's really letting go nice though. Yeah, it's just. I'm gonna go with pound and a half on that, guys and gals. Pound and a half for, for a break. I'm using my thumb up position. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll go with that. I'll give you a pound and a half on that. I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna measure it online, on you know, on camera here. So I got the shade for the Hawk Optics, and I've got some other stuff. Let's see what else came here with it. Okay, fair enough. 25 cal magazines, um, the day states, obviously. Um, we got our, our tray that mounts on the rifle here. For those of you who haven't seen it, I'll mount it here. Let's see here. Cock it to put it in. And I think this guy goes. I usually have to kind of struggle with this a bit. Maybe I got it backwards. Let's, no. Oh yeah, I do. I have it backwards. These pins here go in those little notches. There we go. And then we have like, I'll show you. See these magnets? The magnets just go onto these metal screws because this is a some sort of a titanium alloy breech block on here. Uh, it's like aluminum and titanium, I think. Don't be too hard on me if I'm wrong, but I know that uh, a component of it is uh, titanium. So let's... There we go, and it fits down there like that, and snaps into position. So you can put that pellet in there, drop it in, slide it forward, and do your single shots. I'll just decock this. There we go. All right, so I'm wrapping up the video now. Um, I am really dubious of this thing. I've heard all sorts of wonderful things about them. We'll see. Um, I like American-made stuff. I like British-made stuff. I like stuff made in Britain. Um, you know, the Brits make amazing rings. I love it. I love their British sports match rings. I don't know. I'm really, I know I've talked to uh, other people about them and there's some people that like them, some people don't. This feels too loose to me. I'll, I'll review it. I'll review it. Enough said. Here's the magnet, uh, not the magnet, but the little lithium ion battery and we'll go from there. So, um, thanks for watching the unboxing and I'll be in touch. All right, bye-bye.